Wait, MCDC. Oh, so we can actually go back to that chapter with Iggy. And instead of fighting, we can flee. Anything else different? No. So we can either have the clouds break or we can flee. I want to go back here. Luca, um, yeah, we're going to flee. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Flight. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Hey, Mr. Kerr. We'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, Iggy. See ya, jerks. <sighs> Fine, we know where that leads them. This way, we'll take the tunnels. Wait, there's tunnels? Luca and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. Oh no. In fact, it was ice. Chapter 5 Signs They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed across a snowy terrain. That was actually pretty badass. Uh-huh. I think we lost them. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we went downhill. Then what's up with the winter wonderland? All I know is there no, there's no going back the way we came. Let's see if we can get our bearings. Pull me. Wait, I think I know where we are. Luca? Luca, are you there? Luca had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. Oh, that's right, because this is the this is the path where Rolo was kidnapped. Is that Bozo Kerr? Oh no, wait, that's not Luca. Or Rolo. I hope nothing bad has happened to you out in those woods. Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. No need to be rude. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. Seems like the only dangerous thing in the woods is you. He speaks, the young man of the hour. Now how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Boy, how do you, Van Hart? Horns are full of surprises, aren't you? You knew my parents? I never had the honor of meeting your father. But your mom sure was a handful. Oh, no. Luca winced, shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. We gotta keep moving. Is Iggy wearing a coat? Like, did he know this was gonna happen? Also, that... I'm ready to fight. I know. Everything is sus. Mystic is sus for taking us on this ride. We are sus for following. <laughs> it's all sus. Sitting just about above 228, 258 Kelvin. I, I don't know Kelvin. Okay. Nope. We're going to look this up real quick. What is 258 Kelvin? I'm American. I got to do Fahrenheit. It's five it's like approximately five fahrenheit cold it's cold yeah it's cold celsius plus 273 okay that down a bit from last time last time should we report this to mr kerr eh still within safe ranges maybe spreading but it's under control for now even a small nudge in the equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, relax. 
Just a few more sights to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. Their tanks have that green stuff on them. What's all this? Hard to say with all the snow. I think it's a town sign. I can almost make out letters under there. It's, it's, what town could this be? There couldn't be another town deep into Weep Woods. I'm looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. One step, snow's gotta go. Or step one, whatever. I'll see what I can do. How am I supposed to get rid of the snow? Wait, was I supposed to go? Oh, wait. Huh? Oh, we're throwing snowballs. Okay. Yep. The boys stared in disbelief at the sign that now clearly read, Welcome to Beacon Pines. This doesn't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines? How is that possible? We ran away from town. How did we get back here? So either there's multiple iterations of Beacon Pines and they're having like experiments done on them or I'm not sure. Where did all the snow come from? Well, it's a bit colder than normal lately. That's a pretty big difference between sweater weather and this Arctic hellscape. The puddle we fought at before, it was cold too. Maybe all of it leads to one source. You think it's related? What the hell is going on? No, I, I literally, I don't know. I hurt, I brain hurt. I cannot smart anymore as I has the dumb. I, yeah. We're gonna get you some answers. Let's keep moving. This stuff look familiar to you? It looks like the barrel need the puddle I uh, shoved me into. Yeah. I think there's no way. This isn't the same. This isn't the same Beacon Pines. Because, hold on. The fencing listened, each chain link encapsulated with a translucent layer of ice. It looks like the stuff they put up around Weepwood. The stuff who put up? I, I don't know. This is different. This is not the same town. Because this building shouldn't be here. This should be, uh, whatever the, the, the place is called. Yeah, I think that you might be onto something, Del. I think this is a different iteration because this building's not the same. It should be the super high tech building from, uh, I don't know why I can't remember the name of this company, but the one that the hyena guy runs. It's all frozen. Looking down at the frozen stream, Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Whatever happened here, it happened fast. The fish didn't even have time to run. Or, you know, swim run. Yeah, the crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. Yeah, Iggy is on to me. Everyone's gone. Yeah, but also the building, is, I thought he was gonna say the building is different. There's nothing here but more snow there must be an explanation for all of this. We have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. Iggy, we have to keep going. You don't get it, do you? This isn't one of your pathetic Hank Atomic stories. We're going to, we aren't going to save the day. We aren't even going to save ourselves. My face is mangled. The town is destroyed and everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. You can't just quit. Do whatever you want. Can I have my coat? I'm done. Iggy, it's gonna be okay. Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let out a long, foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. Uh, this seems like a bad idea. 
This is, I need you to not do this now. Oh, add, sorry that you said and. I don't think sitting down and being, and being um, sedentary in the cold is a good idea. Let's just rest for a bit. No, this is bad. You're gonna die. Let's do a fire at least, kiddos. Yeah. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. Get inside a building? Yeah. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. Oh no, they're gonna die. The way the snow covered everything over, it's kind of calming. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had time to say it, but thanks. Huh? For getting us away from those creeps. I sort of froze up back there. Iggy, I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I lost my temper. Now that's bull hockey. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't, right? Of course not. And second, stop with this baloney about losing your temper. But I did lose my Thinking temper. motioned sarcastically to his half-deformed face. Or get caught by the yellow men? Yeah. Obviously. But that's exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being a horse's ass. You were supposed to be a horse's ass in response. That's how it works. Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course. Jeez, you goody-goody types take forever to understand this very basic point. Why would you go around saying cruel things trying to get into fights? Iggy shrugged. It's something to do. You're an asshole before because you're bored? Sometimes I just feel empty. You wouldn't understand. You and Rollo are always having a blast together. Laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse mission control. Iggy now wept openly. Aww. Perfect little Luca Van Horn with his perfect little life. My life is not perfect. Everybody in town likes you. Not everybody. Hell, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet, and even she likes you already. You have Tish. He wiped his nose with a sleeve. I love Tish. Tish is great. But she ain't exactly the world's greatest conversationalist, you know? Luca gave a warm chuckle. Yup. I get that impression. He cleared his throat as he wiped his eyes. This is such a bad place for this. Huh. Must be raining out here. Mm, definitely. Iggy arched into a wide yawn. Don't go to sleep! Oh my god, why? No! You're gonna die! Yeah. Let's lay low for now. Tomorrow we'll get to the bottom of all Luca's this. Luca's eyelids begin to slowly drift shut. Luca? Yeah? I always did want to see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. Fire at first minimum! I know! What do you think? Not bad. I'll give you the full tour when we get back. You know what? Hmm? That's all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Iggy snuggled in some more. When it comes to the worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. Iggy, what the hell? The house smelled of warm bread. Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The oh. doppelganger from his dreams, still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Wait. Was that this path? I thought hazmat suit Luca was the other path. No, wait, no, it was this path. Right? I'm getting confused. I'm getting confused about these paths. Aww, look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. The game is confusing me on purpose, yeah. I think you might be right. I think you might be right. He could see all the branching timelines. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories. All warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Lucas snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? 
The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. He, what? Luca turned to look at his father, still lounging on the couch. That's not true. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Let me show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. Now, now, we both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents, fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. No. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Damn it, Walt, we can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do, just watch? There's a sickness in this town and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Sharper? Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit platitudes. What about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca? Is that you, buddy? Oh. With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, buckaroo. Your mom and I just got a little overexcited is all. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. Uh. Luca in, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. A figure approached soundlessly from the foggy snowfall. Who is that? It stood above them, lingering in contemplation. Slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. Well, they're from not a deep dead. Slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. <laughs> Who is this? Get your hands Whether off me! Whether it was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger, Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. Just what do you think you're doing? Luca looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. You two certainly have caused a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. We were asleep minding our own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Oh, I see. You think you're better than me, you. When it came to complete strangers, Icky had trouble cobbling together an insult. You big-hatted, scarfy-necked furball. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all calm down. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibility. What the fuck? I hate pedantics too, yeah. Great, how about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. Iggy huffed with gratification. Yeah, this is creeping me the hell out. How about you make like a Nat and buzz off? I know, why is everyone sus? Very well. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Wait, do you live here? You might say that. 
you know where we are? You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You gonna help us or not? Before knowing how to leave, one must know where they are. All right, that does it. Luca, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here one way or another. Icky turned sharply and began to stomp off. That seems like a bad idea. <laughs> the writer only knows one character trait, sus. Enough with the riddles. Iggy, wake it up. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Very well, I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back home. Luca and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close. No! Mm-mm. 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 Nope. 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 Don't do that. Close your eyes. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Open them. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some travel gate in Weepwood, or we teleported to some alternate universe, or this is all just some cruel experiment by Kerr and his goons. But this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. Just give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original, true Beacon Pines. Okay, so I think the iteration, the multiple iterations one is correct. You both grew up here, but the town you've called home for the past several years is a replica. A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair, but a replica nonetheless. That's impossible. It's too much work. You'd need a whole town to replicate a whole town. Th I think they patricked the town, yeah. Indeed, to pull off such a feat, Wait a minute. Is that why all the adults are sus? Is that why all the adults are sus? Do they know about this? Do all of the adults know about this? That which could be moved would be moved. That which could not would require a precise duplicate. We would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. You'd think so, unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attention to detail. As for the innumerable trivialities which complete the tapestry, well, you can leave that to this miraculous thing we call a brain. Well, it definitely hints at the clipboards being involved. It has a real aversion to discontinuity, a revulsion even. The brain has a wonderful way of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us sane. Luca and Iggy look around uncomfortably. So you're saying that someone made an entire new town and moved us all and no one noticed. Precisely. But why? Why is the one question that can never be answered with certainty. The best one can do is to uncover- Matt narrowed his eyes furrowed his brow and uttered the source okay so wait the source was said in the dream right what did you say the source like that why indeed you could begin to laugh uncomfortably not the source again i know it's all ridiculous there's no way they he could looked down at his feet his eyes started back and forth in contemplation with a sudden pain, a thought struck him. If this is really home... He sprinted off into the pale distance. Where are you going? As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy? It's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through Weepwood. 
Reporter Girl was also talking about a source, too. Chapter 6. The Source. Okay. Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed, and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to Perennial Harvest. That's the name of the company that I keep forgetting. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. Wait, this is the grave. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard. A headstone. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. You're here. All this time, I thought I was visiting you. But you've been here, alone in the snow. Oh my god, the... The grave that he had been visiting this entire time was not the actual grave? Dad, I'm so sorry. They ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what do I do? There was no reply. Just snow-covered silence. Why'd you give me the slip like that? What if I couldn't find you, you jerk? Iggy finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. Oh. Iggy, they... They stole his tree, Iggy. Yikes. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. Oh, no. We gotta hide. 259k. Fall off distance, still good. Dude, did you hear me? I said 259. Sorry. You ever think about what we did here? We saved a whole town of people. Saved? Doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's the grave of someone with a family. The people who loved them will never know the truth. The truth is overrated. He bent down to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. Hey, don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah, come on. It's almost lunchtime. What? <laughs> Weirdo. Here I thought I was a jerk. These dinguses are out here literally dancing on graves. Luca stuttered through heaving sobs. I thought I was visiting him. I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's a bad break. Here's some Icky advice. Gave Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. Hey, who's any of this helping? What? Sitting here in the snow crying like some pushover? Who are you helping? Iggy, look what they did. They lied to everyone. Blah, blah, blah. Luca Van Horn, you're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jerk comes at you asking, acting like a horse's ass, I should stand up for myself. Hell yeah. Kerr and his merry little band of clipboards pulled off this switcheroo for a reason, right? Nat mentioned something about a source. Took a whole tree, but couldn't dig up a grave. I know, and like, there's gotta be other graves. Why'd they take the tree? But not everything. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Whatever's at the source must be awfully valuable to the harvest, the perennial harvest. Sure, it'd be a shame if something unfortunate were to happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? What do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. The whole source? If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. And what if it's too big to smash? He flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. I'm always up for a challenge. I'm gonna make this right, Dad. I promise. Let's do this. So, 
in his memory, his dad was talking about people were getting sick. What if the reason they did all of this is because everybody was getting sick? Because, like, I've seen what it takes to move and replant trees. A grave is way easier. Yeah, it would be. Is his mom sus yet? I'm not sure. It can get awful cold out there in the woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Helps on the way. Where's Rolo? Where's my mom? Did you kill her? Oh, heavens no. Do I seem like a killer to you? Actually, you do. Iggy and Luca shared a skeptical look. Gotta restart, no worries. Well, do I? Aw, shucks, now that hurts my feelings. Screw that guy. Do we really have to, do you really want to ask that? So this is supposed to be where Luca's house is, but it's gone. A disc of smooth metal was lightly covered in snow. Two faint seams were visible along the surface. A manhole cover? If it is, I've never seen one like it. Can we go? No, we can't. Okay. Wait a minute. If this is the original town, then that means... Iggy darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. With a what? What's that? Long story. So a few years back, I uh came into possession of some premium grade fireworks. Not the wimpy cryer firecracker stuff they give kids. The good stuff. So why did you bury it under a tree? That's the long part of the story. You and Rollo were doing chores at Rollo's chicken coop. Oh. The chicken coop fire. And you guys pissed me off for some reason or another? Luca rolled his eyes with realization. No, you didn't. He stifled a chuckle. Yup. I just wanted to give you guys a little scare. But like I said, these were some primo fireworks. So I might have underestimated things. You blew up the chicken coop? I prefer to think of it as an incendiary redecoration. Sorry, but you should have seen the looks on your faces. Rolo got grounded for months, which is why I needed to stash the evidence and lay low. So I buried him under that tree. And when I came back for him later, they were gone. I figured some grown-up found him and tossed Iggy them. triumphantly raised the shoebox. So that makes me wonder then, when did this all happen? It had to have been after his dad died. Possibly before his mom went missing? Turns out it wasn't the fireworks that got moved. It was us. Unbelievable. Um, we don't know how long ago the chicken coop fire was, right? Do you think this is a game? Actually, I do. Newsflash, boyo. You're not a hero. You're a little brat who is in way over your head. A hero is just someone who refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotting children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman superhero. I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare for blast off, loser. any other charms to get before we go. Oh, thank you for continuing your sub, Kate. Much appreciated. Okay, I can't go anywhere else. Luca and your sub Iggy schedule. inched up to the edge of the That's hole okay. with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. Here, I'm going to give you 
I, it didn't get an alert, but that's okay. I'm gonna do this anyway. There you go. You get hearts, jumpies, and jumpy Carlac. That's what everybody gets. Thanks. I think we might have found the source. Echo, 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 echo. Whoa. I can see why they wanted to move us all out of town now. But well, why would they dig a giant hole? I think this is it. Um, yeah, Kate, we just found the source. This is the source? It's a dang hole? How do we smash a hole? Oh, shit. Oh, it's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Kerr? Where's Rollo? I wasn't lying before. He's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Drat, it's cold. You just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't you? Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. It really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? Well, that's a doozy of a question. Yeah, freeze your bum off, you jerk. This is the source where they collect the unrefined... Uh... Kerr scratched the back of his head. Honestly, boys, I don't understand any of this well enough to explain it. Wait. You don't? Fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. Wait a minute. You What do you mean you don't know? Ain't you in charge? Oh, heavens no. My role is merely to flash a winning smile and manage various... Complications. Complications like us? You are a smart His boy. His face contorted into a saccharine grin. It really is nothing. That is a creepy ass face. It really is nothing personal. Some people are destined to strive for greatness, and others are simply obstacles along the way. Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. The point is that we all play our part in life. Mine just happened to be a lead in the role of a lifetime, and you happen to be extras ready for your curtain call. We aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile's not going to be so winning after we're done with you. Now, boys, there's no need for melodrama. It makes even a professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Kerr snapped his fingers. Scene change. There. That's better. Deal with them. Iggy turned to Luca with a sly glance. Oh my god. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks, and you don't? Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. Stop! Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you. Regret is one of my specialties. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm a child. Anyway. Uh, nothing! Nothing at all! You're a terrible liar. I'll have you know, I am an exceptional liar. Up, 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 that's far enough. He plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. Stop, you fool. Call off your goons. Why is the music getting sad? After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You can call, you can head back for the night. Or you all can head back for the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. Flashpoint, but cold. Sighed into the frigid air. It's just us now, Iggy. You can put that down. What, like With this? A nonchalant flick, Iggy tossed the firework into the hole. Oh, his face? It's creeping me the fuck out. Ooh. Whoa. With a growl, Kerr leapt at Iggy, crashing oh, into no. the Oh no. Oh no. Iggy tried to twist away, but in the struggle, they both tumbled over the side. No. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. His grip was made precarious by the cold, wet snow. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. You reckless child, what have you done? Luca, listen to me. Hold on tight and use the walkie-talkie to call them back. H how, um, what channel do I use? 
doesn't make a damn difference. They're listening always. They're always listening. If you do that, the clipboards will just haul us up and snag us both. The only way to get out of here is if Kerr's out of the picture. Just go and save yourself. If he lets go, we both die. I don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you actually do something selfish and just let go? Mr. Kerr gasped with insult. A long life? I'll have you know, I can still play 25. He keeps talking about acting? Is this like some sort of Truman Show thing going on? You should have heard me sing the part of Phileas Young. With a wild look in his eye, Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. Oh, not this. Rum da dum. Rub -dee dum dum. Can you believe this guy? I got hum. Lucas' hand began. Kerr, just let go. No can do. If you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Luca, look at me. It's okay. Luca felt Iggy loose in his grasp. You're going to kill your friend like that, are you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. Oh my god, this... Okay. You selfish son of a... Yeah. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Nah, I'm just a no-good bully. Like you, Kerr. Iggy, no. Luca felt his hand slipping. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. Oh my god! I can't! It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds, one stone. Makes sense for us to fall together. Wackadoos travel in packs. A calm settled over Aki's face. Luca, let me do this. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Let me do the right thing for once. Oh my god. Luca had no choice but to blank Iggy's request. Can we all agree the writers are the real sus ones? Yes. Honestly, I don't know what I was expecting with this. I wasn't expecting this. I'm not complaining, mind you. Like, I'm actually, this has been, it's a its a good story, but it is breaking me in half. Like, it's breaking me apart. All right, we're gonna refuse. I have a feeling uh, we're gonna die. Luca had no choice but to refuse Iggy's request. He tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time, but Luca pressed the button and called out. We, we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Don't insult your rescuers. Mirror, now. A clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Uh, Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Wait, is he out of the hole? What's happening? Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. With, with, with who? What? A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. The end. Hmm. I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. Yeah, neither of them is a good ending. <gasps> Hold on. I still have to do that one. I guess we're gonna have to accept. I don't want to do this. Luca had no choice but to accept Iggy's request. With a quiet
quiet blink, Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Good. Oh my god. The two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness. Goodbye, Iggy. This is the worst. My day is ruined. I know. <laughs> Iggy would probably rather be in the pit than captured by whoever the founder is anyway. He had more fireworks. Yeah. What? Quickly? fireworks of Iggy's must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before Perennial Harvest arrives. Not until you tell me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved this town. For a little while, anyway. How? Tempus liquimine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. But doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system, that energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side product of this property being, by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a cryogenic cascade. So the gunk makes things cold and the fireworks, fireworks made the whole freeze over. That's one way of putting it, yes. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. I shudder to think what would have happened in that case. We have some idea what that would look like. Actually, we do, because... Wait. Wait. So in the chapter that he froze, I think what might have happened is the adults that were, like, plotting something, they were probably trying to bomb the source and their bomb was more powerful but instead of taking it out it caused the entire village to freeze over I think that might have been what happened it was like an inadvertent thing but I think that's what happened is this where we find out it was capitalism the whole time yeah I'm pretty sure I take a good while to safely break through and access the source again Val <laughs> Oh my god, I need a hug! <laughs> this game! This game! I know you all- I know- If- blah, 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 If you know all of this stuff, why haven't you been helping? Val, you missed it. This game is going to give us nightmares. It really is. I have been in my way. Each one of us has our role to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy his precious time. Mine has been to observe and to wait. Who are you? Wait, for what? You? Me? Why? What's my role? A fierce twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. Luca Van Horn? You are going to save the world. Okay, maybe not. With a chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Nat is a Time Lord, confirmed. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, and closer to destiny. To be continued in Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. No! Are you serious? No, 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 no. 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 Revenge served cold. What? Second time's a charm? Wait, why are these words purple? Why are these words purple? Charm to charm to charm to? Wait, that's it? This ends with a crummy cliffhanger just when it was getting good? 
I was even starting to like Iggy. Blacklight Rolo, yeah. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never-ending <laughs> parade of sequels. I love this narrator. Let's go back and find something more definitive. Okay, so it's not the end. 